this online worship service for the First Presbyterian Church of Marietta, Ohio. Today is Sunday, October 18th. We are very glad for everyone who's able to join us this morning or who happens to be watching this later in its recorded form. The liturgy and hymn information are on our website in the bulletin section. Thank you very much to Brad Thomas and Peter and Gwen Sauer who are doing the tech work today. Thank you to David Nuss, the choir scholars, and also Doug Anderson for music this morning. There is a children's sermon available on our Facebook page already, and you can enjoy that at home. We will have an outdoor worship service this afternoon at 5 p.m. in the garden. Please take note of the time we moved an hour earlier to catch a little more sunshine and warmer temperatures. We invite you to bring your lawn chairs and please wear a mask. We will have a few chairs for folks who don't have their own chair. Let us worship the Lord. I invite you to join responsively in our call to worship. Sing to the Lord and bless God's name. Tell of God's saving power from day to day. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before God all the earth.
the Lord says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Let us now confess our sin, casting ourselves on the promised mercy and compassion of God. Let us pray together. What a debt we owe to you, O God. You have given us all things in Christ. And yet we withhold from you the honor and glory that are yours. Instead, we pay tribute to empire, plot to entrap the innocent, mock your truth with empty praise, and put your patience to the test. Here are personal confessions in this moment of silence. Forgive us, O God, and by your grace, restore in us the image of your face. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar with laughter, and the fields shout in celebration, and the forests sing with joy. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven Thanks be to God. And may the peace of Christ be with you. If you are worshiping with others this day in your homes, I invite you to share the peace of Christ one with another. If you are worshiping by yourself, please know the peace of Christ is with you. Let us turn our hearts again to God in prayer. Holy Spirit, illumine for us this word and the message, that the message of the gospel may come to us in power. Amen. Dottie Erb has provided the first scripture reading for us today. That is from Psalm 96. And then we will hear an anthem by the choir scholars for the beauty of the earth. Our first reading this morning is Psalm 96, verses 1 through 13. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the people. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in a splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad. Let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For he comes. For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and all the peoples in his faithfulness. (laughs) 
Our second scripture reading comes to us from the first chapter of Thessalonians, verses 1 through 10. This is from 1 Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit. 
so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Despite persecutions, the believers of Thessalonica became shining examples to believers in the entire southern portion of the Greek peninsula and even beyond. The homeland of the ancient conqueror Alexander the Great, whose life so dramatically changed the ancient Mediterranean world, became one of the seedbeds for a new culture of grace that would transform the entire world. Paul describes their faithfulness as a work of faith a labor of love, and a steadfastness of hope. These are the character virtues we all know from Corinthians. Here Paul links them to discipleship lived out in the day today. Work of faith. We Protestants could pause there and let Paul challenge our facile recitations of creeds as somehow being enough. Steadfastness of hope. How many of us, after six months of COVID and enduring the toxic political environment, are just ready to despair? And yet we're reading these words of hope and inspiration written by a man who suffered imprisonment and beatings and hunger and cold and so much more. But let us focus today on labor of love. The dictionaries define the labor of love as work performed without any expectation of compensation, done for the benefit of another. That's a start, but it falls short of the deeper meaning this has in the Greek. The word for labor in the Greek carries with it the understanding that a person is working to exhaustion. The one doing the labor of love is working until they're ready to drop. So what motivates the Thessalonians to work like this? What stirred their hearts to the labor of love? Well, the most important reason is the Thessalonians encountered the gospel. Their behavior is an imitation of the powerful image we encounter in Philippians of Christ, the second person of the Trinity who practiced self-emptying love by shedding power and glory to serve humanity. They heard this message that Christ gave his life for the sake of humanity and for the sake of each of them, and their hearts were filled with gratitude. The Holy Spirit poured joy and thanksgiving into their lives. And the freedom they discovered, unburdened by their guilt and their anxiety and their sin, unleashed energy to help others so that those others could experience that same release. Connected to this was their turning from idols. Idols, whether they are the small golden and silver figures of the ancient world or the modern temptations of consumerism and escapism, have much in common. Both demand time and treasure from the worshiper. Both pull worshipers away from people in their lives. Both divert attention from suffering of others. When the Thessalonians gave up their idols, they had time and treasure for the work of bringing God's reign into the world. They found deeper connections one with another and with those around them in the world. And their eyes were open to the suffering they saw in the lives of others around them. And and they understood how they could help relieve that suffering. 
We do have our idols. We do have them. Social media, political personality, financial accumulation, shopping, streaming services, to name just a few, can all become idols. The danger of our modern idols is they often have an appropriate place in our lives. But these activities can move from being healthy and life-giving to snares that pull us into a very dark place. Finally, the third reason I think that they changed so much is they were impacted by Paul's example and by his co-workers' example. They imitated Christ, certainly, but they also saw this love and dedication in Paul's life. He became to their community an example of Christ. He came with the single purpose of proclaiming the life-giving message of the gospel and of showing God's love to those who lived at the margins. He worked beyond exhaustion himself to do this. He suffered persecution. And through all of that, Paul showed that he loved them. And they responded. How we treat others matters. Jesus reminded his disciples again and again that their loving actions was a vehicle through which the world would see his love. That matters as individuals when we share God's love in the world. And that matters as a church, as we witness in our community. And we know from Christ's example that God especially expects our love to be shown to those in the world who are the forgotten, the overlooked, the ones others dismiss as not loving. God can fill us with the same passion that the Thessalonians experienced. God's Holy Spirit is always ready to pour a greater measure of grace and power and energy and compassion into our hearts so that we can share that with others. Today, if your heart is struggling under the weight of the pandemic and the toxic political environment and your own personal struggles, I invite you to take a step towards another person who is suffering. Even in the age of social distancing and masks, we can find ways to do that effectively and safely. Take a step towards someone else's suffering and watch as God fills your heart unexpectedly with energy for this moment. Lift your eyes from the idols in your life that distract and notice the wounds that others carry. Bind those up and experience the love of God spreading like a bomb of healing in your own soul. God is ready to energize us, to fill us with that same passion the Thessalonians experienced. Let us consider again the incredible gifts we have received. Let us turn from our idols and experience the freedom that that brings. Let us behold in one another's lives the wonderful examples of laboring in love, even to exhaustion for one another. Let us take new steps to serve others and find, as we do so, that God has blessed us with more energy than we ever imagined. Let us join in those labors of love that will make the world praise God's presence among us. Amen. Sisters and brothers, I invite you to join in confessing your faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us once again turn our hearts together to God in prayer. Loving God, you are steadfast forever enfolding when we cannot accept ourselves. We pray that your Spirit will empower us to imitate you by receiving those who feel judged and rejected, by walking alongside those who despair, by encouraging those who feel they are broken, and by affirming those we encounter who labor in love. We do lift this day into your tender care those whose bodies, minds, or spirits have been weakened or crushed. We lift up to you your compassionate grace, those whose burdens, guilt, or fears seem just too massive. We lift beyond before your expansive mercy those whose hatred and rage or vengeance cannot be contained. And Lord, we come to you in honest pleas, crying out, lamenting. We all are tired of the situation we're in. We're tired of the pandemic. And oh God, we are tired of the toxic political environment. And we are tired, O oh Lord, of hearing the bad news of people who are ill, of those who have died. We're tired of having to do our normal struggles that we encounter in day-to-day -day living, and the normal health challenges we have in day-to-day -day living, Lord. We are tired of doing it in an environment where there is so much pressure and so much worry and so much anxiety. O oh Lord, we pray you would hear our cry and intervene, O oh Lord. Give us peace, give us wisdom, give us guidance. Bless those who seek to find cures and bring treatments. And help us, O oh Lord, as a society to do the things that we need to do to protect one another. O oh Lord, you have been faithful in the past with other challenges. And so we hold to that word of hope, Lord. We hold to those memories where you have stepped in and worked miracles, Lord, in the midst of struggle. And we ask you, Lord, to do that once again for us. We offer you praise and thanksgiving, O oh Lord, because you are a God who listens to our prayer. In this time, Lord, we lift up the church, we lift up teachers, we lift up our coming elections. O oh Lord, we lift up the racial divides that are so apparent, the economic challenges that many face. We lift up students and families. Receive all these cares, loving God. Fill us with the light of Christ through the work of your Spirit. Hear also our personal burdens in this moment of silence. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus, and we use the words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You'll find information on the liturgy page and on our website about how you can give online. Of course, you can continue to mail your offerings to the church. We do so much appreciate all those who've been able to remain faithful in their giving during this time. Jesus invites us to render to God the things that are God's. Trusting in God's infinite grace, we gratefully present our offerings.
let us join in our prayer of dedication. We trust you, Lord God, to multiply the blessings that gifts represent. As we pour out your love and grace on those who long to hear your words to them, to see your power at work within them, to feel your comfort beside them, through the generous gifts of your Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, beloved by God who has chosen you, the gospel has come to you not only in word but also in power and in the Holy Spirit with full conviction. Go out now in joy. Be an example to all, empowered to love the unlovable and forgive the unforgivable. In the grace-filled name of Jesus Christ, may God tuck us securely into the cleft of the rock, our salvation, Jesus Christ. May we sense the inexpressible awe of God's passing over us. And may we rest in the peace that passes all understanding, now and forevermore. Amen.